Multi-step forms are a great way for your website visitors to submit their information. Join me in this tutorial and I'm going to show you how you can use WP Forms Lite to create multi-step form surveys, contact forms, data collection forms and increase your user experience. During my time in web development, I've created a lot of types of forms. Multi-step forms draw a lot of interest because they look good and they're structured. Personally, I have always found the user experience of a form requiring more than about five fields to be more friendly to the visitor, if done in steps instead of one big form. Of course, there are exceptions. For example, a landing page would look better with a simple contact form. You can view my video here if this is what you'd like to create. This video, however, will be a tutorial on how to create a multi-step form for free. I'm being a little bit creative with the WP Forms Lite version, and it has its limitations also. However, if you don't have a budget and you're starting out, then this is a great way to get it done. Besides that, although limited, you can indeed still create a multi-step form for free, and of course, it's easy and simple for the beginner or even advanced web designer looking for a time saver. The pro version will be showcased in my next video about WP Forms, which also includes more advanced functions like payments and conditional logic and so on. But if you want to create a multi-step form for a survey, data collection, or if your contact form is quite large and requires extra fields, this is the video for you. So let's get started. I'm going to use an example of a student information collection form in which I'm collecting information from a student wishing to submit their information to join a course on the website. Keep in mind that although this is an example, that this method can be applied to any form you had in mind. Before I start, please note that I have already covered the installation and setup of the WP Forms Lite plugin in the previous video, which I'll link in the description. Also note that I will be using the Elementor Page Builder and Essential Add-ons plugins for this video. Both are free plugins which you can install within WordPress by going to plugins and installing them from there. If you are using another page builder or WordPress for your pages, simply use the WP form widget. Firstly, let's go and create the separate forms for our multi-step form. So from your WordPress dashboard, let's go to WP forms and select add new. For the name, you can choose anything you like. I'm just simply going to name it step one. We'll select a blank form. Next, we'll be selecting the standard fields that we'll be using in the first step of our form. Normally, this will involve a bit of planning. Um, I've already done the planning for mine, so I will require a name. And for that, we'll select a name box. I'll require an email address. and I'm going to select the drop down. For the editing of these fields, I'm going to select name. And in my previous video, I noted the importance of making the field size large and then the label name. I'll just add it to something more descriptive and do the same with our email field. Again, we'll go to advanced and make the field size large. In our drop down, we'll also make the field size large. We'll go back to general. And then in our label, I'm going to type in I'm signing up for. And then by the choices, I'll simply insert the different courses that we'll be doing here. Now with the submit button, we'd like to make it a simple next step submit button. So submit wouldn't be the right wording for this. So let's go to settings and let's change the submit button text to proceed. And for notifications, we'll leave this empty as I've covered this in the previous video. Again, the link is in the description. Then for the confirmations, we'll be doing some linking here. However, we'll come back to the section when we've created our pages. Let's move on to our second step and click save. And close. OK, 
Okay, for our second form, I'm going to call it step two. And again, we'll create a blank form. Now for the step two form. For my form, I'm going to use three questions. For this, I'm going to use the drop down fields. So we'll add three of those. My first field will populate the label and ask the question. And in our choices, we'll simply select the options with which they can choose from. Again, we'll always keep these field sizes large so that they can be contained within the container. Next, let's go to our second field. And this will be a simple yes or no question. And we can delete the third field. And then for our third field, again, we'll ask a question and provide the options. Then let's go to settings. Again, we'll be editing the submit button text. And we can simply select the submit button processing text and call it processing in this case. Again, we'll come back to confirmations a little bit later. But for now, let's save step two. And close. And now for our final step. The name for our form, I'm going to call it step three. And again, we'll create a blank form. Now for the final step, I'd like to add a drop down, a paragraph text, and a checkbox. For our drop down, we're going to simply ask a question if they'd like to sign up for our newsletter. Again, just a simple yes and no. I'm going to delete the third box. And then for our paragraph text, I'm going to ask if they would like to add any additional information here. And then for our checkbox, we'll make this and accept our terms and conditions section. Now to do this, I'm simply going to delete these choices and leave one single choice open and call it I agree. In the description field, I'm going to add a HTML code so that they can simply click to our terms and our conditions. You can edit your link here for your privacy or your terms and conditions page. I'm leaving a link in the description where you can copy this code and just replace the relevant information. Before we move on, there's something that I've forgotten to do. So let's just click on each box and go to advanced and set it to large as we've done with the other fields. However, the paragraph text, I'm going to leave as a small field so that it doesn't take up too much space on our page. And then agree to terms and conditions. We can simply leave it as it is. Then in settings, the submit button text will simply change to complete sign up. And then in confirmation, we can change this text to your information has been submitted and we will be in contact with you within 24 hours. Again, I will go through the confirmation types a little bit later after we've done the pages. For now, we can just save the page and close it. Now for the pages, let's go to pages, click add new. I'm going to call this page sign up for our online course. Now we can publish. And next we can edit with Elementor. So there's multiple ways how we can do this. We can either copy our form into the white space here, or alternatively, we can select a different template and clear the screen altogether so that only the form will show, which is what I'm going to do. So I'll go to settings, page layout, Elementor canvas. 
Now let's go to our widgets, type WP. Out of these WP forms, I'm going to select the essential add-ons version. We'll select our form, which will be step one. I'm going to hide my title. Let's go to advanced and add some padding. I'm going to add 30. Next, we'll go to border. Just add a box shadow to it. Add a bit of a border radius. Let's say 15. Next, let's go back to style. And let's go down to submit button. And I'll add a percentage to the width. And make it 100. Now our form is a little bit wide and looks out of place. So obviously we'd like to adjust the width of it. So let's just edit the section. And it is on boxed, which is correct. And we'll just adjust the width. I'd say 625 pixels are fine. Next, we can go back to the widget section. And we can add an image, add it to the top. I'll just select our logo. And we'll insert the media. And I'm just going to add a spacer. I'd recommend around about 120 pixels. I'm going to also go to advanced and then we'll hide the spacer by choosing responsive and hide it on tablets and mobiles. Next we can click update and back in our pages we go to view this page you'll see that it's neatly positioned here. Okay, let's close this page. Now we'd like to create our step two and step three pages for this form. I'm simply going to click on EA Duplicator and I'll do this twice. Of course, the second page will edit with Elementor. And we'll simply click on the edit WP forms. We'll select step two and publish. We'll close this page. I'm just going to quick edit this page and add a dash two to the page's title on Elementor on the final draft that we created. And again, we'll just select edit WP forms and select step three. Next, we'll click publish and we'll go back to our dashboard. Now we've created everything, but there is one last step, and this is to tie in the forms together. We'll need some information to identify page URLs so that we can assign these pages to the relevant forms. Let's go to pages. And I'm going to right click on all forms to open up a new tab. Let's now go to the WP forms tab. Let's go to step one and click edit. Now we'll go to settings and we'll go to confirmations. We'll change the confirmation type to go to URL redirect and we'll add our confirmation redirect URL here. This will of course be the step two page. So we'll go to back to pages. So we'll hover over view of our step two page. I'll right click, copy link address. We'll go back to the WP forms builder and we'll paste our link in here. Now we can click save and close. We'll follow the same steps for step three and edit. Go back to pages, hover over view on step three, copy link address, go back to the forms builder, click on settings, confirmations, confirmation type to go to URL redirect and we'll paste our link in here. We'll click save 
and close. And that's it for our forms and pages. We can now simply add our form to, for example, a menu button. So let's go to appearance, select menus, and we can add a custom link. Of course, we'd like to know what the URL is of the first form. So we can go back to pages, select all pages. I'm going to open this in a new tab and go to our first page, right click on view, copy link address, go back to our menus tab and in our custom link, we'll paste the URL here. The link text can be anything we like. In this case, I'm just simply going to call it sign up. We'll add it to menu and we can click save menu. We've now created a multi-step form in WordPress. This is a really easy method and works really well. There are some more features or creative ideas that can be added. For example, you could redirect your step three to a custom thank you page for your visitors. There are, of course, lots of styling that can be done, but it's generally safer to use the less is more rule with websites. Note that you will have some limitations like the consolidation, which won't happen for each separate email, as well as the ability to receive payments. There are free ways around that too. However, the pro version of this plugin does this easily and I'm giving away a few pro licenses in my next video about WP Forms. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. I really hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Like and subscribe if you did and I'll see you next time.